How to achieve fretboard fluency like me. It's just, um, honestly, it's just figuring out rhythms. What up, Jax? Was this guitar? This was a thousand dollars Australian. This is a highwayman strap. Play gravity again. <laughs>
Ah, my guitar's so broken. cheap fretboard fluency like me it's just um honestly it's just figuring out rhythms so the way i see things is i'm, I'm like i'm just in my pentatonic scale so i'm singing e minor pentatonic right and what i'm gonna do is my guitar scales that's as far as i go in thinking about scales so i have a lot of like little licks that i've accumulated over like 10 years of soloing and I would just be like, all right, what am I feeling? And so I'm thinking, get the groove going. So the groove for this one, I would think. So if I start with that. tension resolution so I will start like a phrase and then I'll respond to it so if I do like a big lick and then I will come to a slow lick so so now I got tension resolution or if I go slow basically going like what's the opposite of what I'm doing and then I just do that and then I go back and forth so if you're gonna play soft and then you go loud If I'm playing very straight phrases, I'll be like, and they'll be like, May meme regime, thank you so much for the five dollars towards the loop pedal. Let's go. So that's pretty much all I'm doing. There's no like crazy shit happening but yeah if you if you think theory like this is truly the the biggest unlock for me like when i say theory is like theory is a hundred percent important i went to berkeley college of music we had to learn a shitload of theory like you had to do it all um none of my berkeley knowledge improved me as a musician i'm just gonna say that flat out berkeley was a fucking waste of my time when it came to like the actual practical knowledge. But what happened was I got to meet a lot of really great musicians and great artists. And I started to see like things that you start to connect the dots between what makes people really good. And one thing that every single one of them had, um, one of the, actually one of the best piece of advices, best piece of advice that I ever heard. Are you guys familiar with the guy Allo Blanc? Hello Blanc, is that how you pronounce his name? Hello Blanc, do you guys know him? He sang a song, I Need a Dollar. Do you, do you guys know that song? I need a dollar, dollar. Hello, Hello Black. So he, he came to Berkeley one time and um, he finished, he did, it was like a panel masterclass. And then I got to go up and I got to ask him a question. And I was like, hey, um, what do you recommend for any artist like or any musician like coming up as, as young? He's like, look, the only thing I would recommend you ever do to get good at music is pick 10 artists. Write down the 10 artists that you like and write down five of the favorite songs that you have of those artists 
and learn everything about those songs. And that's it. He's like, you do ten, you pick 10 artists and you break down five of their best songs that you love, you will get a really wide spectrum over the kind of music you like and the kind of like stuff that you enjoy. And you're coming from a musical p perspective, not from like a theory perspective. And then you will essentially get very, very good. And so for me, where it started to really click was when I stopped thinking about scales, I stopped thinking about chords, I stopped thinking about arpeggios, I stopped all of those things. I just completely like stepped away from it. And I was like, what makes me sound like Luan? And then I started thinking like, oh, it's all rhythms. I started, listen I started singing cover songs and I was like, well, people are like, oh, it doesn't sound like you feel the song. And I'm like, well, why don't I feel the song? And then I operationalize that and it's like, oh, it's because my vocal rhythm is not very clean. And then I started to listen really uh, acutely to like, what is a vocal rhythm doing in these pop songs that I was performing? Like, Brown Eyed Girl and Sweet Caroline and Late Night Talking and you were even Gravity, you listen to Gravity. And like the way he approaches feel in his vocal is from the rhythm of the melody, not the actual melody notes. The melody notes are important, but the rhythm is what carries it. So then you approach that perspective on your soloing and then that's when you start to really start to, you really start to pop out. So even just then, I just went. Now, if I'm gonna go on the third time, I'm not gonna go. That just sounds like shit. So, so I'll come back on this one. Do, do, uh, uh. Bam, you see how that, I, I tied up that idea. I gave you tension, and then I resolved it. And I was just a holding. And then that's how you can be a bit clever. Now, once you learn to really respect the rhythm of stuff, that's when you start sprinkling theory on it. So then for me, at this point now, I'm like, I, I feel like I respect the rhythm of solos quite a bit more and I do not do silly things. I mean, I do silly things. I'll do my little... I'll do my little ones like that, but not as much as I normally would. And then what you want to do is then you start to... The first little bit of theory that you're going to think is now no, don't jump into scales because scales will actually throw you off. So silly, Tom. Yeah. The first step after being like, okay, once you've got your rhythm down, the first step after that is going to be like, okay, well, how can I get my chords connected? So for instance, this chord is just a G to a C. Super simple. One to a four. So when it comes over the one chord, I know I've got... And then now my four chord. So I got... One chord. Two chord, four chord, sorry. move over here. Where's my one chord? And then where's my four chord? And that's how you can connect the different shapes of the pentatonic. But I'm never moving in my pentatonic. I'm just saying, I'm in my pentatonic all day. I love my pentatonic. Pentatonic is great. It's like a nice little cage that you got. You put yourself in, and then you find how to be musical within that cage.
So, Amy, I actually do have a video on my YouTube channel. What scale should you learn outside of? So that's my whole point, right? You don't want to be thinking scales. Like every time someone asks me the question, what scales do I learn? I'm like, usually nine times out of 10, scales are never going to help you. Nine times out of 10, chords are never going to help you because majority of the time people never really jump into how do I feel something? So if you send me a video of you being like, look at my solo and I'm like, damn, that person's got some good feel. I like this. Then we can have a conversation about scales. Then when it comes down to the first thing is like, now it's not what scale do you use? Still use the pentatonic, like I just said uh, earlier, Sonny, like two minutes ago. It's about how do I connect chord tones within the scale? That's all that matters. So, you know, like I get my, my one chord and then I get my four chord. See how, see how that's you don't need to do more than that like there's there's very few genres where you really need to be going hard and those genres are bebop jazz bebop jazz is i would say like a, a really important one. even jazz when i say jazz jazz guitarists sound like shit i'm just i'm putting it out here right now when you listen to george benson when he comes in for the, when he goes to get you by the throat, like when he comes in for the kill to get you listening to him, he is not playing chord scales. He is coming in with a fucking hot melody. He respects the song and he's just like, Ugh, and he gets you like, that, that's a great jazz guitarist. And then he does his fancy shit, but he, he hooks you in. And so like a lot of people will get bogged down by like playing scales, playing arpeggios, playing all this stuff. And it, it, it really does not serve you. It, it's not something that serves you right now. So I would always recommend get into playing music, be musical, hear music, hear rhythms, listen to vocal melodies. Vocal melodies are the most important things in the world. I don't care what anyone says, never. If you're like, how do I get more licks under my belt? Go listen to a bunch of vocal melodies. I'll give you them right now. Um, what's a really cool vocal melody? I'm in love with the shave you. So be like, I'm in love with the shape of you. And then we see if we fit it. So we'll see if we can add that over. I'm in love. Just like using a vocal melody. And it just helps out so much, right? So using those vocal melodies is gonna help set you up because then all you do is just plug in to the pentatonic pentatonic and you've immediately got, got feel. So like for instance, this song, use the vocal melody that John Mayer has. Um gravity da da da. Immediately I'm connected to the screw. Carlton, yes, thanks for subbing on TikTok, my man. Carlton, I miss you, bro. But yeah, that's that's um that's how we do it, right? Now if you guys are into all this guitar stuff. Um, I do have an online music school that we are like it's all the links are in my bio so feel free to jump into my bio um, and or in the description of the YouTube videos I don't know what you're watching from um, I think Twitch is the only one that doesn't have all the info on it but um, jump in jump into the, the school join the community I am going to be releasing a shitload of content 
Um, I just have to find time because I, I have to work full time and do all that stuff. And I'm trying to grow the stream, I'm just trying to do a lot of things. Uh, but my goal is to be a full time content creator. So when I become a full time content creator, I will be here for you guys to create dope stuff so that you guys can solo. But the I want to build an improvisation course and the premise of my course will be um, I will teach you guys the fundamentals in one module and then pretty much the whole course is just going to be me recording loops and you guys improvising with me and I will help guide you guys through the improvisation process and how I do things and then when when we once you guys have gone through like you know 10 20 grooves that you can just practice all the time and you're like actually I kind of want to develop my scales then we will have like intermediate to advanced like once you guys have really established groove then um we can do that that's essentially how i want to build my improvisation course but yeah If that helps you guys, I can just post it. I can clip this for you guys and I can post it and then you guys can have it. I'll post it today if you want. Oh yeah.